the events take place in 1738 in the dirty streets of Paris. A woman peddling in the market gave birth right under the counter and left the baby in a pile of fish tripe. Believing that it was not breathing. Like her previous five children. But against all odds, Jean-Baptiste Grenouille survived. Hearing the baby's cries. Angry people caught the woman and she was executed that same day in the square. So the first sound that escaped Jean-Baptiste's lips sent his mother to the scaffold. By decision of the magistrate, the boy was placed in Madame Garde orphanage. The place was filthy, smelly and crowded. When the children saw the frail infant, they were disgusted and decided to get rid of him. When Madame Guerre saw this, she became furious and flogged her fosterling. Five years passed. Jean-Baptiste still had not learned to speak. But he had the unique gift of sensing all. Even the most imperceptible smells around him. When he was alone, the boy often closed his eyes and inhaled the air full of all kinds of scents. The other children despised him because they felt he was different. Soon John Baptiste realized that his phenomenal sense of smell was a gift he alone possessed. When young John Baptiste did master speech, he became convinced that no words could convey the diversity of scents that surrounded him. When John Baptiste was 13, Madame Girard decided that he was a burden on her and sold him to a tannery 10 francs. Alas, Madame Gillard did not rejoice long in her profits. For on the same day she was robbed in an alley and deprived of her life. Because of the harsh working conditions, on average tanners did not last more than five years. But John Baptiste, despite his frail physique, proved very resilient. He adapted to his new life. Becoming a model of obedience and diligence working 15 hours a day. At the same time, the young man continued to discover more and more scents. One day the owner, Grimal, took Jean-Baptiste with him into town to sell leather. For the first time outside the tannery, Greenway began to comprehend a myriad of smells new to him. He did not yet distinguish between fragrance and stench. For Jean-Baptiste, the most important thing was to explore as many smells as possible. Novelty was his only criterion. While Grimal was negotiating the price of the leather with the buyer, Jean-Baptiste sensed a fragrance combination that was completely new to him and went in search of its source. He found a perfume shop where noble ladies from all over Paris just came to buy the most popular perfume. Cupid and Psyche. Their fragrance was divine. Suddenly, Jean-Baptiste smelled another odor that immediately caught his attention. He followed a young girl holding a basket of fruit. Jean-Baptiste closed his eyes, enjoying every note of that delightful aroma. When the beauty with the fiery red hair noticed the stranger. She was frightened at first, but then she handed him a plum. Jean-Baptiste grabbed her hand, inhaling the intoxicating scent of skin. The girl immediately ran away in fright, but Jean-Baptiste found her easily by the scent. The girl who was peeling the plums had no idea that the young man had crept up behind her. When she saw him, the girl screamed, but John Baptiste grabbed her tightly. A couple in love came out of the house, but they did not notice anything suspicious. Jean Baptiste realized that the girl was no longer breathing. He began to scrutinize all the shades of her smells. Desperate to keep it not only in his memory, but also on his olfactory receptors. The owner later beat Jean Baptiste threatening that if he left again without asking, he would regret it. That night, John Baptiste could not sleep. Realizing that henceforth there was a higher purpose in his life. He must learn to preserve sense so that he would never miss such perfect beauty in the future. At the time, there were more than a dozen perfumers in Paris who competed fiercely with each other. One of them, the once celebrated perfumer Giuseppe Baldini, had opened a store on the bridge 30 years earlier. In his youth, he created several famous fragrances that brought him wealth and fame. But now he has fallen behind in fashion. In Paris, everyone is just talking about the new perfume, Cupid and Psyche. Giuseppe, who was very proud by nature, did not want to admit it, but the perfume was excellent. He was desperate to unravel its composition and surpass the main competition gloves. One day, Jean-Baptiste came to Giuseppe on Grimal's behalf to sell goat skins. Once in the perfumer's workroom, Jean-Baptiste greedily inhaled new fragrances. 
he was unable to hold back and told the perf- back and told the perfumer that he could recreate the composition of the famous perfume Cupid and Psyche unmistakable of course Giuseppe was skeptical of this statement the young man said that he knew all the smells in the world Giuseppe whose ego was hurt replied it was not enough to know sense it takes skill to find the right proportions and to create a perfume formula then jean baptiste demonstrated his skills in action and in front of shock giuseppe mixed all the ingredients in the right proportions and recreated the formula of cupid and psyche when giuseppe inhaled the scent of the perfume he was amazed however jean baptiste said that it had a bad scent but he could fix it the young man immediately set to work and having found the right ingredients in the workshop created a new formula after accusing the young man of arrogant Giuseppe sent him away however left alone he still inhaled the scent of the new perfume and realized that it was perfect the very next day Giuseppe offered Gramal a huge sum in exchange for Jean Baptiste however Gramal did not rejoice long in his profits perishing that same night thanks to Jean Baptiste the decline of Giuseppe Baldini's perfume store was replaced by fabulous prosperity every day the young man learned the secrets of perfumery craft under Giuseppe's keen guidance the mentor once explained to him that each perfume contains 3 aromatic chords carefully chosen to create harmony each chord in turn has 4 aromatic notes in all there should be 12 components but according to legend there is a 13th secret note that no one has yet been able to find However, if someone ever manages to uncover this secret, they will get the perfect fragrance that can give people the feeling that they have gone straight to heaven. Jean Baptiste's main goal was still to learn how to preserve scents. The young man promised that if the mentor taught him this art, he would create the best perfume in the world. Giuseppe showed his apprentice how to make essential oil from rose flowers by distillation. A few drops of essential oil can be obtained from a huge number of roses. This is the very soul of the flower. Inspired by this idea, Jean Baptiste decided to obtain the essence from something other than a rose. But his experience was unsuccessful. The young man was upset and accused Giuseppe of lying. For he could not distill the smell of glass, copper, or even the cat. Shocked Giuseppe told the apprentice that it was impossible to distill the smell of a cat, much less a man. On hearing this, Jean Baptiste fainted and came down with a severe illness. The doctor was powerless to do anything. Giuseppe was broken, unwilling to lose such a valuable apprentice. Suddenly weakening, Jean Baptiste asked him if there was a way to preserve voters without distillation. Then Giuseppe told him about the fine art of enfleurage. He can learn it in grass, the capital of perfumery. A week later, Jean Baptiste made a complete recovery. The Seppi agreed to let him go and give him a journeyman. This patent on the condition that he leave him at least 100 formulas of new perfume. Jean Baptiste had no difficulty in doing so. After saying goodbye to his mentor, Greenway recovered on his way. Giuseppe was absolutely happy and satisfied with himself. Went to bed, unaware that he would never wake up again. That same night, his house, along with a perfume store, collapsed from the bridge Jean Baptiste walked to grass one day he wandered into a cave and at first he could not believe that he had found a place completely devoid of odor he was seized by a feeling close to sacred awe here Jean Baptiste spent many days and nights forgetting everything in the world but one day he woke up and realized that his own body did not have an individual smell like all humans this confused Jean Baptiste and made him feel fear for he was in fact an empty place however this is what gave jean baptiste the determination to continue on his journey and to prove to the world that he exist as he approached the city he smelled an incredibly intoxicating scent that belonged to a beautiful girl in a carriage after presenting his journeyman's patent to the guard jean baptiste entered the city gate and followed the trail of that divine scent this path led him to a luxurious mansion Jean Baptiste could not stop thinking about the beauty with the gorgeous red hair. He sat under the windows of the mansion until nightfall, waiting for the girl to come out on the balcony. She picked a rose and went for a walk in the garden, unaware that she was being watched the whole time. Laura left the flower at the monument to her late mother. Mother. 
the father called out to her, asking her to return to the house. Jean-Baptiste now works in the influenced workshop. He does the job more diligently than the others. And Madame Arnolfini very quickly appreciated his talent. One day, a couple working at a flower-picking operation were indulging in passion in the barn. However, at the last moment, the girl rejected the young man and he, being upset, left. But in his place soon appeared uninvited guest John Baptiste. Having accomplished his plan, he placed the body in an influence rig with animal fat and covered it with a cloth. Later, fresh flowers were delivered for Madame Arnolfini. Since the mistress was now busy, Jean Baptiste accepted the roses himself. The florist was interested in what they were doing in the workshop. For fear of being exposed, Jean Baptiste told her not to touch anything. Madame Arnold, he came in. To whom Jean Baptiste lied that he had covered the rig to preserve the smell of the flower. Dominic Drouard. Madame's lover was not convinced. But he did not check and simply left. Jean Baptiste decided to use the services of a fallen woman. But not for pleasure. But to wrap a cloth soaked in animal fat around her body? In this way, he hoped to preserve the scent. Seeing the tools of unknown purpose. The woman became angry and throwing the money at Jean Baptiste, told him to get out of here. But the young man knocked her out, took her life and calmly carried out his plan. When the fat absorbed the scent, Jean Baptiste proceeded to inflourish. Receiving the precious drop. He inhaled the lively fragrance. The next day, the woman's body was brought out of the shack. No one suspected what had happened to her. Their dog had smelled the perfume that Jean Baptiste had made. Now he was ready to find the cherished 13 notes for his perfect formula. Meanwhile, Laura's birthday was being celebrated. Soon to be married to Marquis de Montesquieu. None of the guests had any idea that John Baptiste was watching them. The groom gave Laura an expensive necklace. Later, all the guests scattered through the maze in the garden. Playing hide and seek. At some point, someone grabbed the twin sisters. A little later, Laura found the shawl of one of them. Suddenly, she saw a figure in the bushes. Jean Baptiste chased after her, but almost immediately Laura was caught by her groom. He wanted to kiss her, but the girl turned away. At that moment, Jean Baptiste broke the lantern with a stone, distracting the couple. When the game was over, guests gradually began to leave the garden, but Albine and Francois were long gone. All evening they were looked for in the labyrinth. While Jean Baptiste used the twins for the first two ingredients of his future perfect perfumes, Hearing someone coming, Jean Baptiste accidentally dripped the essence on his hand. Indignant, Dominic burst into the workshop. But when he smelled it, he immediately began talking to Jean Baptiste very politely. The bodies of the twins were found in the river. Some members of the city council, including Antoine Ritchie's, proposed a curfew, but the overwhelming majority opposed the initiative. For if they did so, all commerce in the city would collapse. The attacks in the city continued unabated. And a curfew was imposed after all. Jean Baptiste was close to creating his perfect perfume. The police were powerless to do anything. The city council was forced to admit its defeat. Antoine believes that if they want to catch the perpetrator, they need to understand his motives. People in the city were in a panic, all suspicious of their friends and neighbors. Finally, Jean Baptiste had only to get the last ingredient. Which would be the young beauty, Laura? The bishop excommunicated the criminal, whom he called a monster. From the church. The priests thought it would frighten him suddenly. Man ran into the church and brought a letter. Informing them that the villain had been caught in another town and. Supposedly confessed to everything. The townspeople breathed a sigh of relief. Not knowing that the real criminal was in fact on the loose. Antoine is convinced that they have captured the wrong person. However, the city council would not listen to his reasonable arguments. In the evening, people celebrated, rejoicing that they could finally walk freely in the streets. Antoine told his daughter to go home. And when she disobeyed, he slapped her. In tears, Laura ran away. The father followed her, but he was delayed by the crowd. Laura found herself, Laura found herself alone in a dark alley. 
a perfect opportunity for Jean Baptiste to get the last ingredient. But he did not have time to do it because the father found the girl. In the evening, he told Laura that he was very worried about her, for she was the only thing he had left. At night, Antoine was plagued by nightmares. More than anything else, he was afraid of losing his only daughter. The very next day, he sent a letter to Marquis de Montesquieu and was about to take the daughter away from grass. Jean Baptiste immediately smelled it and followed the procession north. Meanwhile, Dominic drew out found buried hair in the workshop. Antoine brought the daughter to the inn and booked all the rooms for the night. Tomorrow they intend to go to the island where Laura will be safe. After making sure that there was a high cliff below the window of his daughter's room that no one would climb up. Antoine was satisfied. In grass, people were shocked to hear about the terrible find in the influenced workshop. In the evening, Antoine told the daughter that he had asked the Marquis to hasten the wedding and that she would take refuge in the convent until then. Of course, Laura was very upset by this news. At night, the father locked the door to his daughter's room. Jean Baptiste was already there and was preparing everything necessary to obtain the last ingredient. While the innkeepers were asleep, the young man got inside without hindrance. Taking the key from sleeping Antoine, he went to Laura. Feeling an extraneous presence, the girl woke up, but did not scream. When Antoine entered his daughter's room in the morning, he was horrified to find her on the bed, breathless and bald. The man burst into tears. At this time, Jean Baptiste added the last thirteenth note to his perfume, obtaining the perfect formula. The next minute, the police came for him. But the young man was not the least bit frightened. He was tortured in his prison cell. Antoine demanded that he answer why he had taken Laura's life. Jean Baptiste only said that he needed her. I dated her. Thousands gathered in the square to see justice being done. The crowd applauded as the executioner entered the scaffold, preparing to carry out the sentence. Jean Baptiste, who had hidden the vial of perfume behind stones beforehand, took it. Soon the guards, led by a member of the city council, came for him. Jean Baptiste prepared to open the cherished vial. The young man changed into the costume of the member of the city council. As he was transported to the scaffold, he dabbed a handkerchief with perfume and applied it to his skin. As soon as Jean Baptiste came out to the people, they admiringly began to bow before him and look at him as if he were a god in the flesh. Jean Bob, Peace descended the scaffold and the executioner, lowering the instrument of torture, said that the man was as innocent as a child. The crowd began to shout that Jean Baptiste was innocent. He took perfume from his pocket and used the handkerchief to spray it into the air. People instantly fell into a state of awe, including the bishop, who called Jean Baptiste an angel. Astonished, Antoine watched as the crowd idolized Jean Baptiste and held out their hands to him. People wept with happiness and confessed their love for him. When John baptized threw the handkerchief into the wind, spraying the divine fragrance all over the square, people began to indulge in passion right here. Everyone present was overwhelmed with the highest love and desire. People didn't care who was in front of them. They loved everyone around them. John Baptiste was thinking at this moment of a beautiful stranger with a fruit basket. It was she who revealed to him the mystery of smells. Jean Baptiste could not hold back tears. Suddenly angry, Antoine approached him, who desperately resisted the charms of the divine scent. However, as he approached Jean Baptiste, he fell to his knees, wept and begged his forgiveness, calling him son and embracing. The next morning, when the smell had dissipated, the inhabitants of Grass awoke in the square and were horrified. By noon, the city council was in session. The police lieutenant ordered an urgent reopening of the investigation. A week later, Dominic Drouot, who found the clothes and hair of the victims, was arrested and executed. At this point, the case was closed. By that time, Jean Baptiste was already halfway to Paris. He had power over the entire world and could subjugate all the people on the planet, instilling in them a fierce love. Except that Jean Baptiste didn't need all this. On June 25, 1766, he entered the city at night through the gates of Orleans.
This was the Jean place Baptiste where he was poured all the perfume on himself, and, and the crowd mad with love here. surrounded him. Jean Baptiste, Jean -Baptiste poured all the did not perfume on himself, and the crowd mad with love surrounded him. Jean Baptiste did not resist, submitting to his fate as unusual as his whole life. After that, Jean Baptiste Grenouille disappeared from the face of the earth.